Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living in Southeast Louisiana. I'm Reverend Larry Marie Heil, the spiritual director here, and we are a group of radically inclusive spiritual renegades, healing hearts and creating community. And we embrace conscious spiritual living and encourage everyone to live in enthusiastic expectancy of their abundance and their good. We're continuing our remarkable 2023 journey today with our holiday message of blessings, particularly timely for this time of year. Counting our blessings is like weaving threads of gratitude to create a masterpiece that radiates joy and peace. So stay with us and learn how to create your own masterpiece by recognizing all the many blessings in your life. Let's begin with prayer. Hmm. We take a deep nourishing breath and we settle into that place where we know the divine, whether you call it your guide, Holy Spirit, Jesus, whatever you call it, it doesn't matter. It is that higher being that guides us through our lives, that shows us how to be love and joy and how to make choices that are for our highest good. And what I know is as individual expressions of the divine, each of us have all the characteristics of that divine right within us, waiting to be released. Oh, and what I know to be the truth is that we are each here by divine appointment, here to hear something about blessings, either in the reading, the message, the music, a quote, all of the above. We're here to participate in this loving community and learn more about how to count our blessings and be a blessing on this planet. And I'm grateful that you've decided to take some time to be with us. And it's from that gratitude that I release these words into the law of mind, spirit, and action, knowing that the yes has already been said. It's already done. So I can say amen and we can affirm it together. And so it is. And when I count my blessings, I always count music and song among them because that aspect of my life has always brought me great joy. I love this song that Karen Drucker sings because it's perfect for today. Sing along as she sings, I am blessed. Good morning, CSL Southeast Louisiana. Karen Drucker coming to you this morning. I've got a song I want you to sing with me, okay? This is the magic wand saying you could sing. Sometimes I need only to stand wherever I am to be blessed. Isn't that great to say every morning? Sometimes I need only to stand wherever I am to be be blessed. So that's the whole thing. So let me sing it again. Sometimes I need only to stand wherever I am to be blessed. Sometimes I need only to stand wherever I am to be blessed. Okay, now sing with me. Let me hear you. Here we go. Sometimes I need only to stand wherever I am to be blessed. Sometimes I need only to stand wherever I am to be blessed. Next part goes like this. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. So Wherever I am to be 
sometimes I need only to stand wherever I am to be blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. I need only to stand wherever I am to be blessed. And so it is. So this is our time for celebration and healing. Our time in our service where we celebrate life and we pray for people who desire prayer. We begin with celebration. So I invite you to say aloud, so that the whole universe can hear it, any event in your life for which you're grateful and joyful this week. And now we turn to the healing portion of our service. We're a community steeped in healing. So we pause now to pray for anyone who's not feeling the joy of life that we perhaps were just feeling. They're not feeling maybe that they have things to celebrate. And I truly love this part of our service because it's so in alignment with who we are. So let's pray. God is all there is. God is that love and that peace and ease and grace and freedom and so much more. And as an individual expression of the divine, each of us have within us all of these qualities of spirit. They're available to us right here and right now. And what I know to be the truth is that there are people on this planet right now that aren't embracing those qualities. So we stop for a moment and we create a circle of love. And in this community, we place in that circle of love anyone that we recognize within ourselves or for someone else that might need prayer. So I'm going to pause and I just invite you to say aloud the names of all of those people that you want to include in our circle of love. I know that God is right where each of us happens to be right here and right now, moving in through and as each of us. And I know that the divine has heard every name that we spoke, either in our hearts or aloud. And what I'd like you to do now is pause again. And from your heart to all of theirs, just send out love, knowing that the divine knows exactly how to distribute it. And what I know to be the truth is that anything that needs to be released within each of these people is being released now, be it disease of the mind, of the body, of the soul. I know that anything that's seeking to come forth and be lifted up can be lifted up. And that this release and this lifting up is healing whatever's called to be healed. I know that each of these people is feeling more deeply their connection with the divine right now. I have evidence of that, and I know it to be the truth for everyone that we place in our circle. So I'm so grateful to know that the God without is the God within me. The God without is the God within every person in our circle, every person in this community, and every person on this planet. And I'm grateful for that power of community prayer and what it means to the uplifting of the people on this planet. So it's from all that gratitude that I release this prayer into the law of mind, spirit, and action. Because I know that the divine, in all of its wisdom, has already called all of this good. Any heavy lifting that needs to be done to heal whatever needs to be healed, the divine is already taken care of. So I can just know it's already done, say amen, and together we can affirm it. And so it is. 
I invite you to join me for our community affirmation. My life's purpose is already within me, and I am committed to its unfoldment. I am here by divine appointment to join in a community that cares for one another, to be in a place that transforms people's lives, to remember the highest truth about myself, to learn spiritual tools for personal transformation, and thus to make the world a more joyful place. So this is our time for meditation. And I invite you to let go of the outside involvement in the world. The past is gone. The future is not here yet. And just give yourself some time to be with the divine in this moment right here and now. As we move into this message on blessings, it's important for us each to remember that everything that comes into our lives is indeed a blessing in some form even though it might not look that way at the time. Because what we know is the divine wants only good for us. And if we say yes to what the divine is guiding us to do and be, we always see our blessings. So sing along with our music team as they sing Tender Yes. <laughs> I just invite you to think of something for which you're grateful and feel the energy of that gratitude. Feel the energy of the love that shows up when you think of those gifts in your life that you've been given. And we just settle in for a moment to remember and to allow our minds to go through all our many blessings and to be grateful and praise those blessings.
And as we return from that time of gentle music, let us remember that it is our gratitude that allows us to expand our faith, expand the knowing that there is an unlimited supply of good for us. Hmm. So just anchor all of those things for which you are grateful as we return to this time and space. As I say a tender yes to everything that comes to me, my heart is open. by Carpenter Briscoe. I'm a spiritual practitioner and this reading is the July 10th entry from 365 Science of Mind, A Year in Daily Wisdom by Ernest Holmes. The reading is entitled, I Give Thanks for the Blessings of God. In the Bible, in Matthew 14, 19, we read, and he took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And the reading is thus. Have you and I had the faith to bless that which perhaps seems so very small, a loaf of bread and a fish, and expect it to become multiplied in our experience to such an extent that it would not only bless us, but also bless everyone around us. We cannot help but believe that as Jesus broke the bread and blessed it, in his own mind, he saw it multiplied and growing and flowing out to those around him. This is an example we should follow to bless what we have, recognizing that it flows from a limitless source. We are merely using it and distributing it. There is always more. The limitless resources of the spirit are at our command. The power of the infinite is at our disposal. We have as much to use as we know how to take. But the taking is a thing of the thought, the will, the imagination. It is a thing of an inward feeling or interior awareness in that place where the mind has unified itself with the living spirit. Today, 
I bless everything I have. I bless everyone around me. I bless the events that transpire in my life, the conditions and situations that surround me. I bless everything that goes out and everything that comes in. I acknowledge an increase of right action in everything I do, say, or think. I bless myself and others, for we are all partakers of the same divine nature, all living in the one mind, all animated by the same presence, all sustained by the one power. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, in joy and in love, my blessing rests on everything, in confidence and in peace, the blessing of God rests upon me. Thank you. And this song is a perfect introduction to the message. If we need to remember anything now in this busy season of chaos and hustle and bustle, it's to be grateful to be alive and for every breath that we take. Sing along with Gary as he sings, I'm so grateful. It's been great being with you again this morning. I'll see you next time. Till that time, sing this with me. It's a song I wrote with my buddy, Jamie Lula. It's easy. Sing this part. I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful I'm alive. Yeah. I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful I'm alive. We'll come back to that part. That's your part. Sunshine, your eyes, do drops and dragonflies. I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful I'm alive. Sing with me. I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful. So grateful. Your sweet kiss holding hands in blind. I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful I'm alive. The shadows I conceal endeavor to reveal another part of me, embracing all. Jasmine blooms coming in the spring. Honeysuckle in your room. Oh yeah, I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful I'm alive. Sing it with me. I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful I'm alive. Keep it going. So grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful I'm alive. Claim it. I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm so grateful I'm alive. So grateful. So grateful.
I love you. I want to thank our reader, Robin by Carpenter Briscoe, and Karen Drucker, Gary Lynn Floyd, and our music team for the fabulous music that supports the message today. We all have so many blessings, the gift of life among them, and sometimes we get hung up on the problems in our lives and forget to count our many blessings. So amidst the busyness of this holiday season, let's pause today to count our blessings and truly be grateful for them. Before we do that, I of course have a question for the week. What is the one choice you might make today to be aware of your many blessings? To make counting your blessings a spiritual practice and to remember always to share your blessings. One more time. What's the one choice you can make today to be aware of your many blessings, to make counting your blessings a spiritual practice, and to remember always to share your blessings. Vicki Edwards wrote, to be rich in blessings is to lead a blessed life. Truthfully, I think we're all rich in blessings. The trick is to recognize those blessings so we can lead that blessed life. We have this wonderful gift of choice, a gift that allows us to look at our lives and see the blessings or the struggles. I think there's a lot to be said for that old adage one man's trash is another man's treasure. It might be said that one man's garbage is another man's blessing. Because it's so true about how we see things, is it not? Camille Pizarro put it wonderfully when she said this, Blessed are they who see beautiful things in humble places where other people see nothing. Have you ever walked into somebody's home that you've been to quite a bit and noticed something that you never noticed before and thought was very beautiful? Well, I'm the type of person that would comment on that and say, that's so beautiful. And very often they say, well, it's been there for ages. Yep, the beauty was there and I just wasn't noticing it. I wasn't taking the time to truly see that all that was there for me to see. It's easy for us to go about our days unaware of all the beauty that surrounds us. I have a question. Do any of you take the time to wake up and watch the sunrise? Or go outside during the dinner hour or while you're watching TV and watch the sunset? And yet, a lot of us probably do that when we're on vacation or at the beach where we think they're especially beautiful. Many of you probably know that I don't have a TV. Yet I do watch things on TV and television can steal my peace as easily as it can create joy for me, like being able to watch a Hallmark movie, which I consider a blessing. Hey, I heard those groans out there, but I love Hallmark movies. They're predictable, and they always have people counting their blessings and seeing the good in each other. Not to mention that I love looking at the Hanukkah and Christmas decorations. Can any of you tell me, without looking at your phones, what phase the moon is in? There must be something blessed about an object about which so many songs have been written. Think about how the moon lights the night. Have you taken the time lately to count the blessing of that moonlight? You get the point by now, I'm sure. We have all these blessings that we take for granted. It's time we start counting them. And for me, some of my blessings are the melody of laughter, especially from the grandkids, the comfort of familiarity, 
such as gathering together for morning and evening prayers. The kindness of neighbors. My neighbors check on me and make sure I'm okay. And the magic of many ordinary moments, like enjoying the rain or the sunshine, they can all be blessings. Counting your blessings is not merely the act of listing what we have or what we enjoy. We can consider it actually a spiritual practice. Let me tell you how. When we count our blessings, it shifts our perspective. It redirects our focus from scarcity to abundance, from what's lacking in our life to what's present, and from what we might wish we had to what is already there. Learning to count our blessings helps us to expand our vision so that we see each adversity carries with it a small seed of growth each setback has a lesson, and each moment of despair is an opportunity for resilience. Wow, within adversity is indeed opportunity. And counting our blessings means that we become aware of ourselves and of our surroundings. We recognize the treasures that reside within and around us. As I was saying, the beauty of a sunrise or a sunset, the glow of the moonlight, the warmth of a smile, the comfort of a loving embrace, or the joy that comes from sitting in the silence and allowing love from the divine to pour into your life. C.S. Lewis wrote, when we lose one blessing, another is often most unexpectedly given in its place. I know that to be true in my life. As a matter of fact, sometimes the thing that I consider a problem turns out to be a blessing when I look back on it. I guess that's where that old adage comes. It was a blessing in disguise. I wonder what life would be like if we each took our problems and always saw them as blessings in disguise. I imagine the world would be a much more joyful place. A Course in Miracles provides this. In every difficulty, all distress, and each perplexity, Christ calls to you and gently says, My brother, choose again. I wonder why we make life so challenging rather than just choosing again to see that this indeed might be a blessing in disguise, even though we might not actually see the bigger picture and we may need to wait for the blessing to appear. Sarah Van Brocknuck said, expect to have hope rekindled. Expect your prayers to be answered in wondrous ways. The dry seasons in life do not last. The spring rains will come again. How do you think your life would be if you truly expected all your prayers to be answered? And what if I told you they always are? Jesus told us to know when we ask, it's given. And I think all too often, we forget to notice how they're answered. Sometimes it might be with a not yet. And our prayers are never ignored. So how might we rekindle hope when we might feel it's the dry season in our life? Jack Hiles suggests we become a blessing. He said this, The biggest blessing in the whole world is being a blessing. And while we're not related, his name is actually spelled differently, I wholeheartedly agree with him because my biggest blessing is the joy I receive when I share my good and my love 
And when I become a blessing to someone else who needed a shoulder to lean on, a person that needed to share their sorrows, or perhaps even their joys, and just be listened to. And my personal favorite, a call for prayer. Because everybody knows I love to pray. And that is always such a blessing to me. So there's a nice little uh, story, and it's apropos for this season. For 10 years, there was always a small white envelope peeking through the branches of the Christmas tree at the Kennedy home. It was always the last gift open and held a special blessing. You see, Mike, father of four small boys at the time and a devoted husband, hated Christmas. Not the true meaning of Christmas, but all the commercial aspects of it. And the overspending, the frantic running around to get a tie for Uncle Harry or dusting powder for Grandma. You know what it's like, I'm sure. Knowing that he felt that way, one year his wife Judy decided to bypass the usual shirt, tie, and socks and get something really special for Mike. After all, he really didn't need stuff. So several weeks before Christmas, Judy looked and looked for a special spark of inspiration so that she could get something special for her husband, Mike. Well, it came one afternoon as they sat in the bleachers watching their 12-year-olds wrestling in the school gym. It was a non-league match against a team sponsored by an inner city church. And the kids on that team were dressed in old sneakers, so ragged that the only thing holding them together were the shoelaces. And the team had no headgear. It was obviously a luxury that they couldn't afford. What a dramatic contrast to their son's team, where the boys were all dressed in blue and gold uniforms with matching helmets and sparkling new wrestling shoes. Well, the rag team had fun, but they were walloped. And as Mike watched the team go down, he turned to Judy and said, I sure wish they could have at least won once. They have a lot of potential but losing like this could take their heart right out of it. They have it hard enough. And that's when the idea hit Judy. That Christmas, Judy tucked a small white envelope in the boughs of the tree with a little note inside telling Mike that for Christmas, she had outfitted that entire wrestling team in his name. And every year after that, she found some way to continue the tradition. One year, she sent a group of handicapped kids to camp. One year, she put a deposit on an apartment for a pair of elderly brothers that they had known and whose house had burnt down. And on it went. Well, the kids grew up, and they had kids of their own. And for 25 years, that little white envelope became the highlight of Christmas. It was always the last gift open, and it always left everyone with a heart full of love and joy. And then the family lost Mike to cancer. And when Christmas rolled around, Judy told the kids she just didn't want to do Christmas that year. She said, my feelings will pass, but Christmas will roll around another year, and she was certainly should be up to celebrating then. The kids got together, and the eldest one went and got their mother. There was no way she was going to be alone on Christmas. And all four of the boys, unbeknownst to each other, had put a small white envelope in the boughs of the tree that year in honor of their dad. Ha! Ah, I've read that story many times and it always touches my heart. Imagine if we each decided to do what Judy did for Mike and create that ripple effect 
it affected her sons so much that they all decided to keep the tradition. It would be wonderful if rather than participating in the commercial chaos of the holidays, we reached out and became a blessing to those in need and shared our own abundance. Can you imagine the looks on that small team's faces when they received those new uniforms and sneakers? Or the joy the children had from going to camp? When we share our blessings, we take time to lift the vibration of the planet. Remember that vibrational chart I showed you a couple weeks ago? Well, I looked it up and gratitude is a 900 on the 1000 scale. Wow, don't we all want to be there energetically? Blessings are truly all around us and we can each choose to see them by remembering to notice them and to be a blessing to others. Ultimately, counting our blessings isn't just about acknowledging what we have. It's about embracing a way of being, one that fills our hearts with humility, grace, and an unwavering appreciation for the mosaic of experiences that shape our lives. So as they sang in the movie White Christmas, when you're worried and cannot sleep, count your blessings. It does say instead of sheep, but just count your blessings. It's a delightful way of falling asleep. I know. So in summary, how might you fully embrace counting your blessings? Remember, you have to become aware of them first. See the beautiful things in humble places and just be aware of the many treasures in your life. Make counting your blessings a spiritual practice. You can redirect your thoughts from lack to abundance or from Woe is me to, wow, look at my life. So share your blessings. Be grateful for answered prayers. Be a blessing to someone else. Lift the vibrational energy of the planet by being in gratitude. So here's your affirmation for the week. How is it I so willingly, joyfully, and effortlessly am aware of my many blessings, make counting my blessings a spiritual practice, and remember always to share my blessings. And your challenge for the week, make counting your blessings a spiritual practice, truly do, and find a way each day to be a blessing to someone else. And if you happen to miss a day, double up the next day. Let's pray. Hmm. Taking a deep, nourishing breath and moving into that space within us where we know the divine, where we know that guide that blesses us every day. <sighs> where we know that we are children of the divine. And all that God is lives right within us. And what I know to be the truth is that this week, we are each counting our blessings. We are each becoming aware of all the things in our life that bless us. From the many breaths we take throughout the day that we don't have to worry about. From those walks that we can take and we don't have to worry about how our legs are moving because it's just automatic. There are just so many ways that we can count our blessings. And I know that we are recognizing that this week. And I am so grateful 
I'm grateful that you came and listened to this service, and I'm grateful that you are counting your blessings throughout this holiday season and into the new year. And it's from that gratitude that I release my word into the law of mind, spirit, and action, because I know the divine has already said yes. It's already done. We don't have to effort. We just need to release and surrender to counting our blessings. So knowing it's already done, I say amen. And let's affirm it together. And so it is. So this is the holiday season and people are giving gifts. And I am grateful to the people that have been donating throughout the entire year. And I hope that everyone that feels connected to this community will remember to send in a little donation as a Christmas gift to the community. I appreciate all of your donations. Enjoy our offertory song. Find all of the information for donating at our website at cslsoutheastla.org. You can use the donate button there, or you can use Zella or Venmo at 225-287-8887. You can text your amount to 1-225-320-5100, or you can mail your donation to CSL Southeast Louisiana, care of Reverend Larry Marie Heil, 445 Magnolia Wood Avenue, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70808. We thank you for your tithes and donations, and we appreciate the fact that you are giving gifts that are flowing out to everyone we touch. And while we're speaking of donating, our special event is coming up on January 20th, just a little bit over a month. New Year, New Beginnings. It's our big event to raise money so we can find a place to start gathering in person at least a couple times a month. We'll break bread together and have both a silent auction and a real auction, as well as a raffle. So if you have anything that would help us with that, I ask you to contact us by sending an email to revlarry at cslsoutheastla.org. But don't worry, all of this is out on our homepage. Services such as massage, babysitting, sitting, a cooked meal, cleaning, any other skills you might donate are greatly appreciated. And if you know of any store owners who might be willing to donate to a nonprofit, I can get you a sheet of information to provide them so that they can count their donation. I thank you in advance for helping us to make this a fabulously successful event. Go to our website and find out more information about it. When we count our blessings, we begin to see the world differently. And we meet every event in our lives with grace and love. Enjoy this beautiful song by Gary Lynn Floyd, Blessings and Grace. I leave you with this blessing as you go about your day today. I love you all. I'll see you soon. Blessings and grace, love overflowing, joy in this place. 
Spirit is showing blessings and grace. Mind, body, soul, that I am one with God. Blessings and grace, love overflowing, joy in this place. Spirit is showing blessings and grace. Mind, body, soul, and I am one with God. One more time. Blessings and grace, love overflowing, joy in this place. Spirit is showing blessings and grace. Mind, body, soul. Next week is Christmas Eve, and we'll have our holiday service, Living in Love and Light. Lao Tzu, who is a Chinese philosopher, illuminated the power of love, saying, Being deeply loved by someone gives you strength, while loving someone deeply gives you courage. In this season of giving, we can all learn to be more aware of how we're living from that place within us that is intimately familiar with the Christ and with love. Join us next week as I talk about how to live a loving life, embracing the Christ within to be love. See you there. Thank you for joining us today. I invite you to like us on Facebook at Center for Spiritual Living Southeast Louisiana. And please follow us on our YouTube channel at CSLSELA. And it's just about time to join in our community time, which is a live discussion that follows the service every Sunday at 11:45 a.m. You have a little bit of time to go get a cup of coffee or some tea and then dial into our conference line. The number is 540-792 0192. And the participation code is 475-220. We hope you'll join us. And in closing, remember, Disney claims to be the happiest place on earth, but we at the Center for Spiritual Living in Southeast Louisiana know we are the most joyful. So until we meet again, May you be wrapped in the arms of love and kindness, and may you remember to count your blessings this week and share them. And may you make counting your blessings a spiritual practice so as to multiply the abundance for everyone on this planet. For what I know is when we notice our blessings, we notice all the good in our life, and we find gratitude in small pleasures. And that helps us feel very much alive. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My spirit is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My spirit is alive. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. My spirit. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, my spirit is alive. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Everywhere you go, take a look at the five and ten. Listening once again with candy canes and silver lanes of glow. It 
it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Toys in every store, but the prettiest sight to see is the holly that will be on your own front door. A pair of hop-along boots and a pistol that shoots is the home of Janice and Johnny and Jim. Dogs that can talk and will go for a walk or the home of Janice and Jim. And mom and dad can hardly wait for school to start again, especially in 2020. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas everywhere. There's a tree in the Grand Hotel, one in the park as well. The sturdy kind that doesn't mind the snow. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Soon the bells will start. And the thing that will make them ring is the carol that you sing right within your heart. A pair of hop along boots and a pistol that shoots us a hope but Johnny and Jim. Dogs that can talk and will go for a walk or the hope but Janice and Jim. And mom and dad can hardly wait for school to start again. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Everywhere you go. Take a look at the five and ten, glistening once again. The candy canes and silver lanes aglow. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Soon the bells will start. Then the thing that'll make them ring is the carol that you sing. Right within your heart, right within your heart.